Where is a? Uh... Okay, so let's go, let me go over these problems with you guys. Where is that? Oh, it's, that was our. That was the homework I assigned. Is this is what you guys are asking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you guys about classwork? Wait, what's your? You want to go over the classwork first, or? Okay. Yeah. Well, let me just go over a couple of these problems here to make sure right. we're comfortable with this. So, when you see this here, all this means is you plug one expression into another expression. So, when you see f of g of x, think of it like this, f question mark equals something, right? Now, right now, what is f of x? It's, it's x minus 5, right? So, so let, me, let, me, let me put an x back in here. So, right, so what are you replacing the x with? With g of x, right? So you want f of g of x. It's going to be g of x minus 5. And what's g of x, guys? 4x plus 3. And of course, there's a minus five at the end, so you get four x minus two. That's all. Just takes a few seconds. So the rest of these problems all work the same way on this page. Aja, go ahead. So, is it the same thing as what you just did above? Like, I'm sorry. Uh, repeat that one more time. For three, it's like the six, not six. Did I say six? Yes, it is six. It's also Sorry, that was my bad. The g time okay. and f is yeah. that the same okay. thing? Or yes. So that's not. So that's not time. That's actually a composite. So when you see a circle with a hole in the middle or like an open circle, that's like saying this, guys. It's, it's the same exact thing as saying this. So what you do is you got to take where F is and throw it into G. So here's what you're going to do. Instead of X cubed, what are you cubing now? The G. Sorry, sorry the F. And instead of 5x, you're doing 5 times what? That's it. And you can leave your answer like that, by the way. So, Haley, where you may have taken a long time, and that's my fault, because I probably should have made it clear in the instructions. Did you expand something like this? Is that number three? Yeah, did you wind up foiling that? Um, wait. Yeah, I did foil. Okay. Not, not necessary. You don't have to do that. I am totally fine with leave your answer like this. Can you go over like the last few where you were getting okay. solid numbers? I had okay. variables in my answer. Let's take a look at that one. I didn't realize that you had put the variable mm -hmm. for like the x. Okay. So can you like you get your g of x or whatever or g of f whatever it is, and then add that number into the variable? Well, so so like want we'll, to we'll give me a specific number to work on, like maybe number. Like you want to do 11 or? Yeah, okay. Okay. So guys, quiet, please. Uh, so 11, right? Oh, Cam, do you need, do you need notes? And that's, you got everything? Okay, got it. You got everything? Okay, great. Um, so what this means right here, you got to plug zero into G first. Because G is closest, right? Why? Because it's closest. Because it's closest, that's why. Because G, so when you have, you see something like this here, the zero goes into G first. So you ignore like the G, the F. Whatever g of zero is, we'll go into f afterwards. Oh. So let me let me rewrite it. It's 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 the same thing as saying this. F parentheses g parentheses zero, then two more parentheses. It's like saying that. So you plug zero into g first. That's easy. That's just uh, what's g of zero. You plug zero for x and the g. What do you guys get? Um, One. One. Good. So now, what does this equal? F of one. Done. That's it. Actually, I'm recording this too. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'll watch the first. I did the whole like last half of the That's it. homework wrongs. I didn't realize zero mm -hmm. went in for a variable. I yeah. thought it was mm -hmm. like get. I thought it was like you distribute it, and then you get like in it squared plus. So 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 it's a misconception. We're clearing it up. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Well, that's actually easy. Told you. Yeah, it's always easy. You guys don't worry about it. Now, 13 is a little weird because 13 has two identical functions. So you got to plug two in the G. And then where yeah, that is, 
it's kind of like in middle school they teach about the function machines you plug something into a function the output becomes the input for the next function it's kind of the same thing so g of, this is g of g of two right huh so you do that first which is nine of course right that's g of two of course and then you gotta plug it in again, right? Then you gotta do two times nine plus five, which gets you what, guys? That's it, done. That's all you gotta do. Now let's move on to maybe some of the bottom, perhaps. I mean, they're all kind of the same thing. Uh, what are the other ones you wanna talk about? They're used about, or does it all make sense? Yeah, those are good. Mm -hmm. Uh, for what number? Because let's look at number 20. And Isabel, did you have a question about one of these that you want to ask about? Or Okay, let's do, let me do 20 right now, and we can look at the other three. Okay. So, again, guys, it's just arithmetic. That's all it is. G of H of negative 4. Right, so if you work that out... You get nine. Then you get yeah. Should we twelve? What did Ansky say? Uh, the Ansky could be wrong. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um. Wait. Hold on. Yeah. Plug in negative four into n. That's sixteen minus sixteen minus five. Oh wait, we did h of. We did it wrong. You told me the wrong answer. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, let's do eight. Let's do eight. Let's do h of negative four again. What's sixteen minus five? I thought It's eleven. You put nine. Yeah. It's okay. It happens. It happens. It, yeah. So it's fourteen. Okay. Yeah. That. So Elizabeth made a careless error. That's all it was. I'll explain it again. No problem. Okay. So here's the deal. I'll do it on the board. You get g of h negative four, right? So you got to put negative four into h. So that's negative four squared. <laughs> Sixty minus five is eleven, of course, right? Yeah. Then you got to plug into n. Eleven plus three is fourteen. That's all. I don't pull That's it. I ain't gonna pull it out. So we'll do it three more times. We won't kill, right? Let's look at um this one up here. Plug like negative 10 G, that's 100 what, minus 40, which is 60. Plug in 60 is F, negative 2 times 60 minus 3, negative 123. Let's do it again. Plug like in negative 1 to here, you get negative and negative 1 squared minus 5, which would be negative 6. Plug like in negative 6 is that. I'm not getting a negative 41. Let's do it again. Plug like in negative 1 to here, G of negative 1 is going to be 1. Plug like in 1 to that, get 6. So all you're doing is you're plugging the number into one function, wherever that output is, becomes the input for the other function. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So that's all that's going on for that. I don't know. That sounds kind of funny. Okay. So that's kind of what's going on. But let, let me go back to the notes again, see if you guys have questions about the notes. Um, let me pull it up here. Give me one sec. And we're going to do six four today also. Yeah, who's, who's, who's laughing really loud? It's really funny. <laughs> anyway. Chapter six. No, it's like from the other room. It's from the study room, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right. <laughs> okay guys let's talk about this stuff here um i want to read guys quiet please so there's three main things uh for this unit so 6.1 was on simplifying exponents understanding how to go from exponent form to radical form 
6.2 was on simplifying radicals, solving radical equations. And then you have this stuff. So when you see something like part A, I mean, it's pretty obvious you're multiplying F and G, right? So it's just 6X times X to the three fourths, right? That's pretty easy, not that hard. And if you want to simplify, you could say 6X to the seven fourths. Sure. And then B is pretty easy. You just put one on top of the other, right? Not that hard. And you could simplify it. How do you simplify that? Six x to what power? One fourth. Because if you don't see a, if you don't see an exponent, you assume it's one, right? And you subtract. Yes, yeah, so you make that four over four minus three fourths. Now this is part C is the part I care the most about because that's a skill you guys haven't really seen. Uh, and it's a very important skill to have moving forward uh, as you guys could take pre-calculus next year and calculus year after. Patrick, go ahead. Uh, so Mr. Morris mm -hmm. said that we could do like the infinity notation thing. Yes. Um, yes, but, but how you write domain. So what um, Mr. Morris taught you guys was interval notation, which actually I like a lot too and prefer. I'm going to be pretty open about how you guys write domain in the beginning, but eventually we're gonna adopt some standard, the standard being what Mr. Morris taught you guys. But here's a, here's a deal with domain. I, yes, domain can be a little tricky. It's really two things you gotta watch out for. And I'll, I'll put as a text box here. For domain, and put this in your notes. Watch out. Whoa, that was loud. All right. And pick these on the gun, please, thanks. A little distracting. All right. Domains can be all the X files you're allowed to plug in. Hold on. Let, let me let me write out first. Can't divide by zero. You can't have an exponent in the box. Can't square roots. Negative, negative numbers. Okay. And these are things you guys already know. I mean, you, you guys have known this for a long time. You can have a square root on the bottom. If it's I don't thing. care about that. It's what I care about is I don't want you plugging a number in that won't give you an answer. That's what domain domain means. What you're allowed to plug in to the function. That's oh, what it means. Okay. So domain's gonna be all the x values you're allowed to have. Is the question still? Or, oh, what? Um, the ones that you guys already have. No. Yeah. Right. Yes. Exactly. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this. And actually, let me rephrase that. Instead of square root, let me rephrase that. Can't even root negative numbers. Now, guys, quiet, please. Let's back up a little bit here. How can you can't divide by zero? Like, I mean, I know, like, generally speaking, like, 10 divided by 2 is 5 because 10 equals 2 times 5, right? That's not that hard. I know that, right? But 4, can I multiply a number by 0 and get 4? No, because any time 0 is 0. That's why you can't divide by 0. Also, square root of negative 16 is going to be imaginary, right? That'd be four i times four i, which I know you guys did. Falls on leave, but you can't find two identical real numbers that multiply to negative. It's not possible. So whenever you're even rooting, you have to make sure you're not even rooting negative numbers. You can't divide by zero. Fortunately, x is on the bottom of it anywhere here, right? So we don't have to worry about that. After I simplified it, I don't have to worry about that. But I have to guarantee that this is positive. This has to be positive. And actually, technically speaking, because there was initially an X beginning here, um, you probably don't want zero also because uh, if you were plugging zero in the beginning, that could be a problem. So bottom line is this, you can't divide by zero, that would be bad. You also can't even root negative numbers, that would be your domain. Doing a gap greater than zero. Those are the only two things you have to ever watch out for, is even radicals and X in the denominator of a fraction. That's it. You could, but because 
um, initially, there's an X in the bottom of the fraction here. I can't divide by zero. The, you're, you're right, the simplified form doesn't have this. You're right about that. But taking a step back, if there's any, any place where when I do plug in zero, I have to be divided by zero, that's an issue. I'm going to make sure I exclude that from the domain. So we'll practice more domain. And what I'll do, um, even starting Monday, I'll, 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 I'll start infusing some more review stuff with you guys anyway to get you ready for the test on Friday. Uh, and again, small test. Is spell good? Is it just X is greater than zero? Just X is greater than zero. Yeah. Could I write out the X? Sure. Sure, that's fine. That's fine too. But yeah, because if it then equals zero, then it'd be divided by zero over here. That'd be a problem. And then, so for the one that was f of x plus g above, uh, that's up above. Yeah, things up above. Yes, this one right here. Why? Okay, let's look at that one. So obviously, you're just adding the two, right? So by the way, that's four root x. Plus, um, oh, minus nine root x. So that's negative five root x. So now you want the domain for that. Here's the deal. You don't have a fraction, so don't worry about fractions, right? But it's an even radical. You can't have negatives. Oh. So it's got to be grid and equal to zero. <laughs> now, did Timo teach you guys this technique? Yeah. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? Or do you have questions about it? Or Okay, that's called interval notation. This is the preferred notation. We move on to pre-cal and calculus. Um, I'm gonna not assess this for this test, but I will ask you guys to use this for future stuff later this spring. But what this means, it's not that hard actually. Uh, the bracket means the zero is included. The parentheses means the zero is not included. And when you're going from zero to infinity, think about the number line. Zero being the middle of the number line, and where's infinity? Way out here, right? So if you're to um, plot this on a number line, obviously it would start here. And where would you shade if you're going x is greater than equal to zero? You shade to the right. So that's why you write it like that. You write zero first, infinity afterwards, to show you going from zero and, and, and beyond. It's put it, put it. No, because zero is less. So you always have the lesser number first, the greater number second. That's negative infinity. That'd be negative infinity. You've got negative multiplied. And infinity is not even a number, right? So that's why I don't have a bracket around it, because I even know what infinity is. It's an abstract idea that number just goes on forever. So, then never mind. You, you oh, okay, good. But yeah, I was going to say it doesn't matter if you put a bracket. No, you have to put a parentheses. Yeah, but if you but if you know what AJ is saying, if you want to write out verbally, that's fine. If you want to write as inequality, that's fine. Initially, I'm fine with how we write. Ultimately, we're going to have to embrace the interval notation because that is the notation that most mathematicians use for future math classes. Right. Those be good. Hmm? Exactly. Yes. Yes. No, uh, if, if it was all real numbers, um, you can write all real numbers. That's fine. Some people write an R with a line through it. That's fine. Um, or you could write this. But why is that like, like from the piece, like not to it? Because it, what is infinity? We don't know. It, it, we, have, we have a bracket. That means it's a number you know exactly. I don't know what infinity is exactly. I got no idea. Okay, I think we can move on to a, our new topic on 6.4. Um, well, and I'll make sure, um, you know, I'll have some review stuff ready for you guys next Monday. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, oh, sure, yeah, go ahead, yeah, totally, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to 6.4. So um, in these same notes, let's go to 6.4 part one. And I'm just gonna cover, um, I'm only gonna do part one to not part two. I think it's a little too much. <laughs> So for the test, mm -hmm. um, will it be like a strict thirty minutes? Like you have like taken away? No, it's not. Generally, well, I mean, it's not I'll make sure you could do it in twenty minutes. Put it that way. So it means I I should be able to do it in two minutes or three minutes. 
<laughs> I no, I just I just for a living. I do fat. I work math fast. That's all. So I, I will make sure. It's, it's put this way. Mr. Gilmore sh shared a copy of his test with me. He's given tomorrow. It's only two pages. You could you could do two pages in thirty minutes, right? I'm pretty sure you could do two pages in thirty minutes. You should be able to. So it's just going to be like that. So. All right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm only going to do um, the first couple of pages. And I think what I'll do to help. Um, ease your fears about the test next week. The homework I'll assign will be a six one six review over the weekend. How about that? Okay. So instead of um I still gotta teach six four just to feel comfortable that I'm not falling behind. That's for my own sanity. But I'll, the homework I'll assign for the weekend will be stuff on um six one to six three. So you guys get more of that practice. Okay. So I'll make sure you guys get that practice, which we talked about on Monday. We'll do more of six four and maybe some six five on Monday. And then six Wednesday next week's all review. So, uh, you had a question to spell or you good? Okay. All right. So let's talk about, um, and we'll get to the first two pages here. Pages eight and nine. Okay. Um, everything okay? Matthew, you're okay? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. All right. Inverses. Okay. When you, when you guys hear the word inverse, what do you guys think of? Yeah. Opposite. Exactly. Yeah. It's like opposites. Totally. Hey guys, Char Charlie Matthews, stop talking. All right, thanks. So, exactly right. Word opposite division would be multiplication. And Cam, stop talking, Matthew. Thanks. Uh, opposite square rooting. Squaring. Okay. Opposite of cubing. Uh, cube yeah, cube rooting, exactly. Wait, what is, what is the thing one said? Squaring. Yeah, that's, that's hard to read, sorry. And then the other one says. You know, you know what, let me do this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write better. My. My mouse is a little too sensitive here. I'll, I'll fix this. Subtraction. Multiplication. Squaring. Cube rooting. <laughs> Let me just adjust this. There we go. Hope that's better. So, I mean, you guys, this should be pretty intuitive, nothing new. What this means is that when you find the inverse function, that's what we're going to work on today. And by the way, this plants the seed, what we're going to do after um, we finish chapter six. So, as I said, like sometime in March, we have the SJTI, we'll have the second half of chapter six test, a part from the SJTI on March 5th. After that, on March 10th and all March, we're going to be working on a new topic called exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Ask any of your siblings, if you have older sibling or any old friends or juniors or seniors or much older who took this class and you mentioned logs, their eyes might bolt up in their heads. Because logarithms is a pretty tough topic. And sadly, that was the topic we had during the pandemic three years ago when I taught this class, which is really awful. <laughs> and they didn't really learn logs very well. But in order to understand logarithms, it's a really complex topic, which we're going to do later in March, we have to understand inverse functions first. Inverse functions is the foundation that we need to understand the stuff we need to do much later. Okay. But for now, we're going to keep this pretty basic, pretty simple. So here's a fine inverse. It's, wait, 6.4 is not. Non test. Okay. So when you find the inverse, it's really two steps. The 
it's two steps. Step one, swap X and Y. And two, isolate Y. Yep, and get Y by itself. Yep. No, I'm going to switch it right now. No, what you're doing first is you swap X and Y. After you swap X and Y, now you're going to isolate Y. Now, this is where you do the inverse operations, which again, you guys know this because you guys have been solving equations for the last three or four years, right? Um, how would I, how do I say Y here? What would I do? Because five is it, adding five is the inverse of subtracting five, right? So X plus five equals three Y. And then since Y is being multiplied by three, what's the inverse of multiplying by three? So what is y equal? y equals x plus 5. So this right here, yes, is the inverse of y equals 3x minus 5. So that's what I say. Later in March, we get to this new topic called logarithms. In order to understand that topic, we need to understand this process of inverses. I know it seems very elementary, like why it doesn't seem significant. It's frustrating, will be a separate thing. Um, oh, it's going to be Oh, half lives. Yes. You can replace with negative points. Okay. Which I don't know. I use the graph divided by two. Okay. Now, really quickly, this looks pretty fun. Wait for this. Take a quick look at the final answer. That's why. So the original equation is three times x minus five. Okay. Obviously, let's addition of subtracting five, adding five. The inverse is multiplied by three, by three. And also the order is reversed too. Order of operations, you multiply and subtract, right? Here, obviously we're adding because it's up top. Can you just look at it and figure it out? Yeah, you could, you could. Um, but sometimes we get a little more complicated like in number two. Let's move on to number two. And then we'll do number three after that. Yeah, why? Good. Sure, yeah, of course. All right, so you switch X and Y. Can I get some more water? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, do what you got to do. Okay. X equals Y cubed plus 4, right? Yeah. Okay, so after you swap X and Y, we got to get Y by itself. What did I do to get Y by itself? I should probably subtract the four first. Good. And then cube root, and that's that. And I gotta go here. So y is the cube root of x minus four. So that's the inverse of x cubed plus four. Okay, let's try this one more time, and then we're going to kind of look at it graphically on the next page. Good. That's nice. And then we're done with the notes for today. So now it's been a long day for you guys. All right. So same thing, x, a long week. x equals the fifth root of 2y plus 1. <laughs> Okay, your goal is to isolate y. 
What do you think I do? How would I isolate it? Yes, good. Raise everything to the fifth power. So you got x to the fifth. Okay, there were two steps away from getting the answer. What comes x? Last one. And then divide by two. Okay. Now, one thing I want to quickly talk about with you guys, which I'll talk more about on Monday. Uh, let's take a look at just, just we don't have to like say just just sit back and watch. Let's 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 have an example. Here. So the original function was this, right? Y equals x two plus four a. The inverse was this, where um, y equals two roots. Okay. Again, we'll we'll emphasize this on Monday. Do we okay? So you're helping out here. So give a number to plug in. Why? Why? What would I get? Four. 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 Uh, yeah. I was saying, plug in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, no, the only thing that's so fun. It lasts for less than Okay, hey guys, here we go. Oh, come on. Stop. 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 Okay. So, you guys, quiet, please. So, if a composite mm -hmm. node, which is this up here, right? You guys talked about it because it came up. If a composite function results in X, and the final result is X, what that will tell you is that both of the functions involved are inverses of each other. So if this happens, if you have a g of x or g of f of x, doesn't matter, and the final output is x, the two functions are inverses of each other. Now, when I look at these two, I'm pretty sure there's going to be inverses because that's x times 3 minus 5. What's the opposite of multiplying by 3? And what's the opposite of subtracting 5? So I'm pretty sure this is going to work. But what you do is this. You do f of g of x. Which of course f of x is three x minus plus you're doing three parentheses, and you're not gonna put x, you're gonna put g, so you're gonna put all right. Does that make sense? What that doesn't work. Hold on, AJ, let me clear it up first on this your question. Um so f of g of x means you know replaces x here. So instead of an x here, you're putting g there, right? Yeah. And what's g is all that chunk, right? So this goes in x position. So because f of x is 3x minus 5, right? But because g of x is all this junk, you got to put this in the x position. It's like what we did. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. And so, Asia, go ahead. Before you can ask. Um, I was going to say, to my clarify it, is it possible if we just take mm -hmm. the two of them and do it instead of y? You could do that, too. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that would verify it also. I just wanted to show you that this is another way to do it. That, that's like, yeah, that's no, but, but, but yes, if you were to actually literally find that invert and it equals that guy. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, if you distribute, you get x plus five, x minus five, you get x. And there you go. If I did it the other way around, if I did g of f of x, I'll get the same thing. I'm not going to do it kind of redundant, but yeah, that's what happens. So that's how you can verify two functions of inverses when that happens. Or at the very least, if you see this expression, know that f and g are inverses. So, so you want to be aware of that. Um, I've actually seen stuff, stuff like this show up on the um, AP exam for calculus, which I know you guys are not going to take calculus for a couple of years, but at this time, two years from now, if you're going to take calculus AB, if I happen to teach that to you guys, I'll remind you of this. <laughs> because this is something that does appear again later in math down the road. So this expression, just recognize that these, this means that they're inverses. But to verify what AJ is saying, it's totally fine. You could just also just find this inverse straight up, like in the last example, and see if they could do it. Okay, let's do one more. What's going on? All right, one more. Example five. Okay, let's find the inverse. How do I do it? So you would do X. X. Uh, uh. And by the way, FX is same thing as what letter? FX is the same thing as saying, y, y. yeah, same thing as saying Y. So FX is Y, right? We just got swap. Okay. How do I isolate Y? What do I do? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Jeez. I forget. I forget. Before I did, move the seven over. Move the seven over first, yeah. yeah. Guys, guys, enough. Stop it. Matthew, Cam, Charlie. How are you guys even sitting together anyway? I thought I'd move you guys. Okay, we'll, we'll move you guys next week. Because I, I don't even know why you guys are sitting together. Well, these guys got to move. So we'll figure it out next week. All right. Guys, what's going on? All right. So you got to raise both sides to five thirds. I think this video is gonna be hilarious. Just all the back and forth here. All right. So here we go. So that's all. So. 
But if you didn't have more than first What does that say? Oh, yeah. Plus, 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 I am so glad Andrew brought this question because my pre cal students made this mistake on my first day back after a week. And I was really disappointed in my pre cal students. But it's not their fault because they had a pandemic and they didn't learn to study already. So here's the deal if you have four plus five squares, what, what's that? Right. But you can't do this, right? That's the point of the thing. What would that be? That would be <laughs> 41. So, 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 so it's the same thing. If X plus 7 raised to 5 thirds, that's the best I can do, right? Yeah. If I did this, that's a totally different expression. Yeah. Yeah, because if I were plugging, let's say, if I were plugging in 1, that'd be 8 to the 5 thirds, yeah. which I think would be 32. But if I plug in one here, I get a much different piece. Yeah. So so don't do that. Okay. Yeah, these are not the same. Yes. So that's one. So now, now I'm glad Rob, so don't make them sick pre yeah. <laughs> so, Um anyway, okay. So then it says verify that are inverses. I mean, if you did f of g of x, so the verifying part will do really quickly and we're done for today. Um so f of oh by the way, another thing I need to talk about too. You okay, Haley? What's wrong? Are oh, you just coughing a lot? I'm not even sick. I just have it's to okay. That it's okay. It Sorry, happens. Don't worry about it. Sorry. Oh, it's terrible. That's what I had. I went to a cough. I went to the doctor. That's good. Just that I have like, like. Okay. okay. Um, another thing I need to mention too. This notation, by the way, yeah. we see after the negative one symbol next to it, it's not an exponent necessarily. It's not like flipping over anything. It just means inverse, right? It's just a notation thing. That's what we do when it's a cosine. Exactly, right. When you guys did the inverse trick last year in geometry, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. So, exactly. No, no, but I just want to make sure you recognize that. So, when I do this right here, Guys, quiet, please. I need you to focus. Guys, whoa, come on. Let me finish, please. Thank you. All right. So we see this here. You're plugging the inverse into itself, right? If you do that, you get um, parentheses x plus 7 raised to the 5 thirds. But then that gets risen to 3 fifths, right? Because that's part of the original function. Minus 7. And then these would drop out x plus 7 minus 7, get to x. That's a verification part. That's that's when you put this function back into the original. So if I plug this back in the original, just to verify that I got this working right, that's, that's what I was doing. So, 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 I, haven't, I haven't decided. Well, first of all, this is not even until March this test. Oh, okay. Okay, guys, remember, 6-4 is not on the test next week. <laughs> yeah. I just have to at least get this process started. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm here all week anyway, but uh, but I can, I can Zoom with you guys Thursday night if you guys want. Yeah. Sure. I can do that. Sure. That's it. Yeah. But if you want more, that's fine. Yeah, I don't care. It's well, why's your shoe off? My eyes are up here. Yeah, you tell him, Charlie. Okay.